Okay, yeah, so let's do that here. This is what the stretch sound sounds like when Reaper does it. But if we use how Vegas stretched it, we hear this. Right there at the beginning. So the lesson we learned was that we, Reaper taught us that we stretch it and it sounds cooler and eerier with the reverb. Uh, and then in Vegas, we can stretch the video, this video, and it comes out okay. Uh, but we, uh, and then we lined up the original unstretched sound, blah, 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 blah. But then when we're done and we have the video stretched, we mute the Vegas stretch and put the Reaper stretch back in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Motion Part 67, New Era. In today's episode, we entered continuing to reflect a new series feels imminent which means coming overhanging our attention fine tuning using reaper is becoming a thing in this series and we just gave an example of that this is reaper here and this was the uh, unstretched version the upper track and then the, this is the stretched version and we have confirmed that if you stretch it in Reaper and re-render it as a WAV file, you get a better quality, especially because we're running it through these two effects tracks. We're running it through a reverb on the left and a and a pan left and then a pan right on the right. So what that has let us do is make a nice uh, animation to share at our next open mic. So that's a good. Um, uh, a few other things we've worked out on methods of nuances of working with arpeggio figures and new methods of working with structural chord overlays in particular we made a improvisation six here where traditionally we have taken the minor chords and put the major chords under them and played them simultaneously in this series this time we took the for example the one two chords uh, one two one two which looks like looks like it looks like whatever it looks like over here yeah one two and we overlaid that with a two one two one and we come up with something that sounds kind of cool and then and then uh, we jumped ahead but first of all we're just going to play this part for you this is what the fast uh, paired chords sounds like And by, by throwing the uh, arpeggio figures in there, and then we went in and we used our little technique of looking for arpeggios that would cross the bar, which is what you're seeing here. And because the original sort order, because this is the original structural sort order, uh, is monotonic rising, we get a monotonic rising arpeggios and a monotonic rising uh, reinforcing line. So that was cool, and it doesn't sound bad, the trick is it was like all going uphill. Lip, 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 lip. So then we were walking in the morning, having listened to this, and came up with a new theme, this theme here. And that became Improvisation 7. So the new theme is very simply this. And what is kind of cool about that is a lot of things. Um, it's, it reminds us of, uh, of the previous music that we've heard that we like. We like that kind of stretchy thing. We're going to play this whole thing for you now. 
uh, but it also um, it uses the root both modes and both urges from our C1661668 hexatonic parallel scale. And it gives us a way to take the chords out of over here, take these chords, this and, and this and so forth. And what we've done is we've again made an upper lower layer. These are the one twos and the two ones and the one threes and the three ones, et cetera, et cetera, on top of each other. But instead of in monotonic rising order, they are now in the order of this overarching theme. And that means you can see here that the chords don't all necessarily go in one, two, three, four order, like six. I know that's hard to read. Six comes before five and so on and so forth and uh, 11 comes before 10. I mean, it's enough of a difference that, that, that we, we hear it. And of course, the backbone is, is always playing the, there in the background. So what we're going to do is play this all, everything at once. Uh, there's more than one chord that goes with a C. There's more than one chord that goes with a B, etc., etc., etc. So let's let her rip. So what we like about this, and this concludes the stream, by the way, is that it gives us a new order of chords to work with, or as we call it, new cadences. We could, new ideas, we could easily come in here and make arpeggio figures. Uh, we already have two more theme ideas that would kind of close or complete this one, which is a half cane, da, 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 which is Staten's, da, da, da or in this case, an, uh, a driftance. So each of these chord is giving us different uh, cadences here. Here's an ambivalence. This is a half cadence and so forth and so on. So our ideas for next time are to keep working with um, seven secondary themes. Uh, also keep working with six, got some ideas there. And we got some new animation ideas. We uh, we we did the one for five that we're going to share today at Open Mic, and you can see here what we're actually doing is overlaying the MIDI animation with the Muse score animation. Shout outs to Miss Cleo and Mr. Spatz. So tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back, and do keep on streaming.